Um, I want to thank my great friend, Senator Cantwell from uh, Washington, for agreeing to join me here. I didn't think we could really leave Washington, D.C. without marking this moment, the moment at which we left $11 billion of export credits in the pipeline unanswered, the moment that we left thousands of American jobs that produced that $11 billion of credit um, behind and said, we don't care about your jobs, and we've turned down small business. The reality is that many of our larger businesses, the businesses that you hear a lot about when we talk about the XM Bank, a lot of those larger businesses, guess what? They can wait a month. They can maybe you know, convince their, their uh, uh, customers that this problem will get fixed, hang on. They produce very large pieces of equipment that uh, in many cases are unique to their industry. But there are thousands of small businesses, in fact over 5,000 small businesses, who rely on the XM Bank, who have, we have said today, you don't matter in Washington, D.C. You don't matter to the people of, of Congress because you aren't big enough for us to worry about. And let me tell you, they matter to me and they matter to Senator Cantwell, and this is policy that is so frustrating. It's frustrating for us because you will hear the statement, well, we'll get, we'll get around to it. Really, you'll get around to it. In the meantime, you have allowed unnecessary disruption in the lives of the, not only the people who work at the XM Bank, but the people who rely on the XM Bank. And so I thought it was critically important we talk about where we are right now, and where we hope to be the end of July. But we also tell those businesses, tell those businesses that are out there that there's still people here who believe in what you do. There are still people here who believe in your jobs and are gonna fight every day in July to make sure that this happens. And so I wanna turn it over to my great friend, Maria Cantwell, and then we'll open it up for questions. Thank you, and thank you, Senator Heidkamp, for the uh, uh, Kirk Heidkamp legislation in the Banking Committee and trying to continue to push this legislation through, trying to get it out of committee and get a vote on the Senate floor. And uh, as uh, the poster says here, we have four days left before the important tool that small businesses and manufacturers across the United States use to export products to new developing markets expires. It's unfortunate that there are members of Congress whose opposition to credit financing is going to cost Americans jobs. It's very unfortunate that the people who lose their jobs because of the failure of a credit agency uh, is something that we don't want to sustain moving into July. So my colleagues and I are going to do everything we can when we return to make sure that the credit agency's reauthorization is immediately considered. We are meeting with President Obama on July 8th when we return as a coalition of supporters of the Exim Bank, and we hope to uh, gain uh, support for immediate action on the Export-Import Bank. The issue that uh, our colleagues are now discussing about moving this as a legislative item on a discussed bill for the future is not the solution that hard-working <clears throat> Americans deserve. They deserve to have the certainty that this type of support for small business exports at the time we're trying to expand trade that we are not just focusing on corporations, but on small businesses who are taking the risks to be exporters, have created great products, have great solutions for the marketplace, also have the financial tools. So we're not uh, interested in those that basically support Wall Street, but not Main Street, continuing to prevail on this issue. We want access to capital to our Main Street businesses so that they can become exporters, and we're going to, over this next uh, several days from July 1st to July 7th, before we return, working with our colleagues uh, on events across the United States to amplify this issue so that we hope that when we return on July 8th and we meet with President Obama, we will have a path forward for this legislation uh, in the early days of July. So with that, we'll turn it over to you guys for questions.
allow a mutually agreed upon vote. And there was a vote. To, there was a vote on the uh, on the NDAA bill amendment, and that was that was not the mutually agreed upon vote. So what? So what now? Have you had any follow up discussions with him? What's the next step? Well, there's been a lot of a lot of follow up discussion, and I think that the issue is is that as we leave here, it's clear that the bank will expire on on July 1st. And what's unfortunate about that is that, as my colleague just said, things that are in the pipeline won't get done, about $12 billion worth of business. But what's even worse is that as American uh, manufacturers and small businesses are trying to do deals all across the world, they're going to be going to meetings with breaking news that this credit agency no longer exists. And so they're going to be at negotiating tables with competitors where they're going to be at a significant disadvantage. And so we want that rectified as soon as possible. Now, we know the other side is going to try to have a big party and celebrate. My prediction is that Republican members will try to raise funds off of this. So while American businesses are building products, competing on an international basis, at the negotiating table, try to close sales on US-made products, Republicans are going to be fundraising off of this. So I would ask them to get their priorities straight and to be accountable to this and help Americans compete in a global economy. Well, we've both read with, uh, you know, his, his, we've both read what his comments are, but, you know, we know what we were committed to, and we know that we're not interested in one more day than necessary of the bank's expiration. So the notion that everybody wants to keep putting this at some goal line, you know, that's who knows when. We don't even know what's going to happen on the transportation bill. Transportation could be, could be another short-term extension. So. What we're going to do is fight every single day so that, one, that the American public understands how critical small business exports are to our economy. Number two, why credit insurance and Main Street capital is more important uh, to get done for these businesses. And that those who are fighting the bank are basically the Wall Street cronies of people who want to kill things like Dodd-Frank and everything else, and they don't even understand access to capital to Main Street. So. We want to fight that battle every single day and see where we are on July 8th and see what appears as a vehicle after meeting with the president. You know, it, what's interesting about this, and I think it's critically important in the context of what we're talking about today, which is shutting down access to capital for small business in America. We know we have at least 65, we think 67 votes in the United States Senate. We know we have the majority of votes in the House of Representatives. This did not need to happen. We know that there were commitments made or, or, or uh, understandings that weren't necessarily carried through on, including an original understanding that the export-import extension would be on the highway, the first highway extension. That didn't happen. And, and it's important to note that on the National Defense Authorization Bill, we had a vote on a motion to table when we won that vote on the motion to table, they withdrew the amendment. So I don't know how anyone can look at that and say that was a fulfillment of a commitment to put XM on a vehicle that could, in fact, result in preventing the shutdown of the XM bank the end of this month. And so this, this idea that, that this has no consequences, you're going to find out over the next weeks what kind of consequences shutting down the XM bank has had. You're going to find out when, when mainstream America wakes up and says, this is, this is an agency that returns money to the Treasury. This is an agency that supports American exports when you're all talking about trade. This is an agency that, that has agreed to reforms in a package. And why is it that you can't get it done? And I think that's the troubling part. And, and it, it is syst systemic of the United States Congress and how we operate. To, to disrupt commercial enterprises only to say, oh, we'll fix it. And, and, and Maria and I are going to be watching very closely as we look at 
what are the political ramifications because we know there are, there are a number of ideologically um, uh, right groups who don't like the bank. But you know what? In America, majority should rule. And in our case, supermajority ought to rule, and we ought to get this done. And so um, we just want to tell, first and foremost, American businesses that you have champions here who aren't going to let this happen, who are going to make it a very, very high priority in the next month, and that we're going to do everything that we can to hold people accountable for what's going to happen with the bank. We want to tell the employees of the bank, look, do not get discouraged. We're out here. We're helping you in every way that we can so that you can do the job that you signed up to do, which is promote American business and American jobs. with Senator Baldwin in New Hampshire with both Ayotte and Shaheen. Uh, we were in have, Oregon with Senator Merkley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how is that coordinating? Are you leading that effort? Is that something that's being run through the, the DPCC, through leadership? How is this uh, effort going to be undertaken to try and, and do this out in the field? Well, you will see um, our uh, colleagues from both the House and the Senate, I think, at a press conference shortly in which they're going to emphasize the Export-Import Bank and jobs. So I think you can see that the leadership of both the House and Senate think that this is a critical issue. So I think what is going to happen is a little more organic than top-down planning, though. And I think that uh, several members have events planned in, uh, in particular uh, areas where manufacturing is very strong. And so I think you're just going to see that those things are going to happen. And I think the message that we have is that while our colleagues on the other side are going to try to say, well, we don't want to put the floor time to have this debate, we're saying this is the debate. We're saying if you want to help the American economy and you want to help jobs, which is what we think we're going to hear a lot about during the recess, then you would take this up and get it done knowing. And if you just filled the tree on issues to make sure that TPA and the rest of the trade agenda got done, then you could certainly fill the tree and shorten the length of time that it would take to get this done as well. Hey. So we think the excuse, the days for excuses are gone, and you should take this up on July 8th when we return. I, I think you, you probably recall from previous press conferences when every time someone says, well, what's the vehicle? I say the vehicle's the bill. We know we've got support for the bill, but I think what you're also probably going to see as, as the XM Bank notifies that $11 billion or that $12 billion of, of credit, guess what? We can't guarantee that we're going to be participating in, in this credit. We can't, we, we, you can't count on us. I think there's going to be a whole lot of phone calls that are made from local lending institutions that work very closely, closely with the export bank. I think there's going to be small businesses all across this country who are reaching out and saying, I can't believe this. Because frequently, people don't pay attention to what happens here in Washington. They would rather not have anything in Washington affect their lives. Now they're going to find out, I think, how directly this will affect their lives. And I think we're going to hear more and more from, from uh, American manufacturers and American exporters. Senator Baldwin, you mentioned a July 8th meeting with the President about the vehicle. Is that all XM Bank supporters or Democrats having a general bank or general meeting with the President? Well, uh, the uh, yeah. two of us have been invited. Okay. There will be several other people there. Yeah. So. Any Republicans? We're, we're coordinating schedules. So it's for people who want to see the Export-Import Bank done. So, hey, and, and the President, um, during this whole process of TPA, uh, and all the process of trade, um, we've had, uh, at least I have had, two simple messages. Number one, if you care about trade, you've got to care about financing trade. And there is only one piece of the trade you know, infrastructure that is time sensitive right now, and that's the Export-Import Bank. We weren't able to, to, to make that happen in this recent uh, flush of, of trade uh, legislation, but the President has, um, I, I think, had some awareness raised in terms of um, what's happening, but also has committed at a very high level to participate with us in, in um, securing American jobs and American exports. And that meeting is July 8th. Yeah. Yes. Do what you want, which is have a vote on the 
Well, on, on the same vein, Lindsey Graham is, is a champion. Mark Kirk is co-sponsor of this bill. Lindsey's on the bill. Blunt's on the bill. And so, you know, Cruz is one senator doing the challenge. Um, we hope that that's not the voice that's listened to. And so I, I guess what I'd have to say is I think it goes more to the category of w what, what's the real purpose here? Is it fundraising or is it to secure American jobs? Well, and I think, you know, I'm sure it's been uncomfortable for the other side to be between the Heritage Foundation and the Chamber of Commerce, but they got to stand up and decide whether they're going to support American businesses' opportunities to export U.S.-made products and grow jobs in the U.S., or they're going to go with an ideological bent. And the time, as we have said, is up for people to try to hide behind a process, and it's time to have the vote. Well, and, and I, I just want to point this out. In the banking committee, where we secured a hearing, on the Export-Import Bank. In what universe are the two Democratic witnesses, the National Association of Manufacturers and the Chamber of Commerce? And so th 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 this is two worlds, and, and we've seen them collide before. We have seen this ideological fight again, and, and we saw it during the shutdown. Now we're shutting down the bank, same, same cast of characters, right? And, and at some point, you gotta stand with American workers you got to stand with American business and do the right thing. And this has never been a political issue before. And for whatever reason, it is today. And what we're saying is the time has come to give us a vote. If, if we get a vote straight up, we think we win. And that's why we're not getting a vote straight up. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.